Hi everyone, welcome to my third video on my second update of the solar panel system. Um, just two updates really. The first update is that I've been running this, this setup today for several hours under a reasonable load. I've run a PC, monitors, a sound system, various other things for several hours and it's been, it's been great. I learned something new as well. Over here, it says how many amps it's pulling from the panels on the left side. Currently nothing because it's dark. But in the days, it shows how many amps and it's been pulling me one amp. And I've just been thinking, why is it only pulling one amp when it's full sun? But I think the reason why is because the batteries only pull a certain amount of amps to charge up. It doesn't necessarily pull everything it can from the solar panels. It seems to be pulling just what it needs. I think I'm right in saying that anyway. Um, maybe it's the maybe it's the charger that pulls it. I don't know, the charge controller. But whatever. Anyway, that's what it seems to be doing. It only pulls a set amount, not everything. When I had it on load today with the PC on and all that other stuff, I was surprised to see that it was pulling a lot more amps. It was pulling three amps, more brightly, three amps from the panels, which is a lot more than what I've been used to. But still, it can go up to a lot more than that. It can go up to about 7 amps or 8 amps. So it just shows that this could power these batteries or charge the batteries and actually have a massive load as well as that. So today I've been charging the batteries and having the load at the same time. And it still hasn't gone up to the maximum capacity of 7, providing it's a really sunny day. It still hasn't gone up to that. So I'm very pleased. It seems to be working really well. So, oh, that's my understanding of it anyway. Someone, somebody may be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. So, the second thing in the update is the safety of the system. I've had it checked by an electrician now. Um, and he, he mentioned about this RCBO. He said that, that that's good, that needs to be in there. Because it's 240 volts, it's enough to kill you. So, 240 volts... It needs a, an RCBO. So I put an, a 6 volt, sorry, 6 amp RCBO in there. And that includes a 6 amp MCB in it. And also an RCD, a residual current thing. I don't know what, what it's called. But if it detects any problems, um, it cuts it off. So if anyone was to get shocked or anything like that, it would just cut it off. Which I believe is what the one in your house does too. So that's good. However, um, I've also done some other changes which the electrician has not mentioned. In my 24 volt system here, you could potentially get a shock, a 24 volt shock. And you can see that the CCA rating, which is a cold strong camp, Cold cranking amps rating is over 720 amps, which is just crazy. So, potentially, if you shorted those two, you could get a shock of 24 volts, 700 amps, if you had no resistance in your body whatsoever. Which, which basically, you'd have to be like a piece of copper wire to get that, I believe. But there you go. Potentially, whatever happens, it could draw that amount, which it seems to be designed to draw that amount for a car or whatever. But that's far too much current. So I've restricted it by taking out the thing that joins the bank together in each of these. And I've put in the fuse holder. And put a 5 amp fuse into each one. So, so if you were to short these two here, if you were to short them, the maximum it could pull is 5 amps and then the fuse would break. So instead of having a, as well, instead of potentially having a shock of 24 volts, um, 700 amps or 600 amps or whatever the rating is, now you could only really go up to 5 amps. So it makes it a massive amount safer. You know, if you dropped any tools on it or whatever, you can only pull 5 amps and then you cut out. And 
break the circuit from the 24 volt bank so it's better so the next so that's good um, I'm pleased with that it's a lot safer the next thing I need to do is this they all join up to this or these two little blocks here so this is pulling in 24 volts and now potentially 20 amps so 24 volts 20 amps it's still it still seems a little bit dangerous to me to have that there like that because if you shorted those I don't know if you'd get a shock on it I suspect you probably would I've actually had two shocks but these that was before we had these um, and they weren't painful or anything like that it was just a bit of a tingly feeling however with 20 amps going through there and 24 volts I, th I think it just it needs to be made a bit safer so I'm probably going to get some plastic junction boxes or something and just um, make that a little bit safer so that you can't touch it or so that you can't short it I imagine if you shorted it you'd get a big uh, you'd get arcing so I'm going to make that safer and um, well, that's it really so if you do one of these uh, if you do one of these just make sure you get it checked by an electrician like I have and uh, they don't seem to be too concerned about 24 12 volt systems but they're more concerned of the 240 volt system so it's worth doing it because um, I didn't know about this RCBO but now it's safer so there you go thanks for watching bye